So when we graphed them, remember we went kind of in a circle all the way around. They end up in each of these quadrants, right? So when we're thinking of those the trig functions that we do as we move forward, it's kind of a pain in the butt to deal with angles that are larger than 90. Okay? So we use what we call reference angles. So basically the reference angle, so like let's say I have this angle drawn, right? That goes like this. The reference angle is technically going to be like if you come down to the x-axis, it's going to be this part here. Right, so the reference angle is going to be formed. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase that. Right, so we're going to learn how to find the reference angle for each quadrant. All right, does that make sense, kind of, sort of? If you need to move and sit somewhere by an outlet, you can. Okay. Yeah, that is my one complaint about the iPads is they don't have a low power mode. But, all right. So, let's start with quadrant one. Right, so quadrant one is over here. And I'm looking at this picture that is on page 56 if you want to kind of follow along. Right, so if you have an angle that is in the first quadrant, right, so again, that's your angle measure. So angle measures theta, um, when you see the letter P, that's talking about the reference angle. It's actually the Greek letter rho, but we're, you couldn't use a P. Okay, so in quadrant one, your angle measure is equal to your reference angle. Easy enough. Because, again, in, if it's in that first quadrant, it's going to be less than 90. Right. So, quadrant one are the easy angles. All right. So, let's look at quadrant two. So, again, if my angle is this red one that I've drawn... Okay, so theta for this one is technically from here up. It's this big part, like, of all of that, right? All right, also, make sure you guys are kind of watching what I'm doing. For I'll give you guys time to write stuff down, but I want to make sure you're following with me. All right, so again, this is theta. So, like, from here up, this whole, like, from this to this. But our reference angle is going to be over here in this case. So, like, this is our reference angle for quadrant two, right? It's from the x-axis up to that terminal side in the shortest way possible. Huh? All right. Reference angle is, like, the smallest angle we can form from the x-axis. Right? So, like, in quadrant two and three, we're using this side. Basically, we're trying to form triangles, like, on that x-axis. Right, so in quadrant two, if we need to find that reference angle, we're going to do so our angle measure is equal. What the heck is going on with my Apple Pencil? Okay, so theta, so the angle measure is equal to 180 minus the reference angle, which makes sense, right? Because from here over is 180 degrees. So if you have 180 minus this piece, you get what's left. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, following? Yeah. Okay. Why not? All right, so let's remember that. Look, so like from, all right, watch. From here up to here, that is 90 degrees, right? Yeah. From here to there is 180, uh, yeah. 270, 360. So if we're going from 0 to 180, that means this whole part's 180. So if you do 180 minus this piece, you're left with this piece. Yeah. So you can use that formula when your angle is in quadrant 2 to find your reference angle. 
The what? Did you say beak? Okay. All right, so then in quadrant three, so if we are here, right? So again, theta is going to go all the way around, but our reference angle is going to be this piece here. Again, the reference angle is from the x-axis down to the terminal side. It's the little piece formed with the x-axis. So to get that piece, that equation means so like our whole angle is going to be 180 plus the piece of the reference angle, right? It'll give you an angle measure. Yeah, so it's going to give you a theta, and then you're going to have to use that to find the reference angle. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so you'll be given an angle measure, and you have to use that to find P. So this one's just 180 plus whatever number we have? Yes. No. It's a number equals 180 plus P, and you're solving for P. Wait, how do you solve P? Subtract 180. Yeah, once you have the number plugged in, you'll see it. All right, and then any ideas on our last one? All right, sh all right, wait, wait, shh, no. All right, so look, it's 180 to here, and then you add that much to it. So the whole angle would be 180 plus P. All right, guys, hang with me. You're all over the place again. Hush. Okay, so in quadrant four, so again, if this is our initial side, this is our, remember, so... Theta goes around the outside, right? But inside here would be our reference angle. So if we go all the way around, how many degrees is that? And then we take away this much, right? So that means our angle measure is 360 minus P. Yeah. Also, guys, I have colored markers and colored pencils up there on that stand if you ever need some. And highlighters, like, help yourself. Yes. Shh, guys, listen. Put the P on the other side of the arrow and just do 270 minus the P. Because you, the reference angles always form with the X axis. That's why. Okay. It's always formed with this part here. That's why. Okay. My brain just I know. It, it, I, I agree with you, but we use them with the x-axis because it, it makes it more consistent when that becomes like a reference angle of your triangle, so it works out the same like for each one. Okay. Wait, should we be done? We're not done. We're not done, guys. My plan is to only do notes today. Like, in examples, but, like, I'm expecting that to take up most of our time. Oh. So I need you guys to be quiet and let me keep teaching. Yes? Will the equation give us P? It'll give you theta, and you have to find P. Oh. We're going to do an example here in a minute. All right, so, again, remember that 180 is equal to how many radians? Four. One. Two pi. Nope. Pi. Pi. Four pi. Yep. <laughs> so, again... It doesn't, all right, so if you're given radians, you use the pi. If you're given degrees, you use the degrees, okay? So, again, for this one, it would be pi plus p if you start with radians. This one would be 2 pi. All right, you will have to find reference angles in radians and degrees, so you need the formulas for both. For guys who don't understand I'm just saying, I don't have to, like, come in here and teach me again. Wait, what do you You've got to listen to me the first time, though. Yeah. And try and focus there instead of just automatic. So, step one. Is everybody listening? Yeah. <clears throat> you need to put that angle between 0 and 360. It cannot be negative. It cannot be larger than 360. All right. We're going to change it. Oh, okay, okay. Remember when we did coterminal angles while we were gone? Yeah. Where you added and subtracted the 360? That was like the first thing we did while we were off.
Yes. Look back in your notes for 3.1. Right. All right. So, again, step one is to... It's a theta, guys. So, again, we're trying to find the reference angle for negative 135. We need to put it between 0 and 360. We do that by adding or subtracting 360. All y'all do remember this, though. You got to see how high it can go. Oh, you want to add them on this? Oh, I can go in circles. <laughs> so, since it's negative, we need to make it positive. So, that means we're going to... Add. There it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to add 360. So somebody tell me what negative 135 plus 360 is. What the? Ugh. Why? It's really not. All right, so, like, like well, in this case, we don't want it bigger than 360. That was just for those specific homework problems. Um, it can go bigger than 720, but right now, we don't want anything bigger than 360. So, if it's negative, if it gives you a negative angle, add 360. If it gives you a number bigger than 360, subtract, subtract 360. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay? Yep. We got that? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, step two. Determine what quadrant your angle is in. Three. Yes. Three. I'll show you in a second. Oh, All right. So, again, we have up here is nine, 90, 180, 270, 360. So, since it's bigger than 180 but less than 270, that's going to put us here somewhere. All right, so now that we know what quadrant our angle is in, which we said quadrant 3, we now know what, that tells you what formula to use. Oh, and that has 180. All right, hold on. So, our formula for quadrant 3 So, again, is theta equals 180 plus P. So, our 225 is our theta. So, we're going to plug that in over here. So, 225 equals 180 plus P. We need to get P by itself, so we're going to move the 180 over. So, what is 225 minus 45? Done. You found the reference angle. Let's go, guys. 